So you all heard it. You all heard Jesus say these words. We have to deal with them. We cannot just look at one word and forget about other things he says. He says to us today, if anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, he cannot be my disciple. And then I finished this gospel passage, you know, when I say the gospel of the Lord, that means, translates to, what you just heard is good news. Okay? How, though? How is that good news? Well, I think uh, we are disadvantaged as English speakers. We need to go back to the original Greek. The Greek word that Jesus uses that tr- hate is translated from is miseo, and that means to detest and esteem less by comparison. So, by comparison, it looks like hate. If you compare the things, my love for Jesus, the love that he demands, is up here, everything else below here, by comparison, looks like hatred. So, to use some more real-world examples, I like to think of a dog. A big, fluffy golden retriever that's so excited to see you, to see you come home, you have a treat in your hand, and all the dog wants, it's just quivering with excitement, it just cannot wait to get the treat and then get the belly rub from you. Nothing is going to keep its attention off you. Not a toy, not its favorite bed, not any other place outside, but getting that treat and rubbing up against you and loving you so much. It looks like it's disregarding and renouncing everything else, but really, it just really loves you. In the same way, an athlete, think of an athlete training to run, uh, to win a gold medal or to complete a marathon. They need to renounce everything else that gets in the way of them getting that gold medal, of their training. This athlete is giving his entire body, his spirit, his mind, every ounce of sweat and effort so that he can win the race and get the gold medal. So by comparison, you might think, since he has renounced donuts and binging uh, shows on the couch and just being inactive, it might look might look like that he hates different unhealthy things, but I'm sure he probably loves pie just as much as the rest of us. He has renounced all these things for the sake of the gold medal. And another example that came to mind in prayer was Winona Ryder, in Stranger Things, she plays a mother whose son is kidnapped by scary monsters from a supernatural underworld. She has a relentless and violent disregard for anything that gets in her way of trying to save her son. She runs through the whole town, mascara stained eyes. Everyone thinks she's crazy and she doesn't care. There's monsters that get in her way and she doesn't care about that. And even the law enforcement tries to stop her. But nothing will stop her from getting her son, rescuing him, and trying to save him. These examples of devotion look make everything else look like hatred and renouncement. And these examples of devotion are given to us by God himself, by God in the Trinity. If God is like Winona Ryder, who is so obsessed with finding us and saving us, he'll come all the way to earth, lower himself, to become Jesus on this earth, to chase us and find us. Jesus himself is like the athlete, giving every ounce of strength, every ounce of muscle, every sweat, renouncing all other things with his body so that he can attain the gold medal for us, which is our salvation. And that dog who loves to get belly rubs and loves to get treats from you is like the Holy Spirit, who just continues to bump into us throughout the day and just shower us with love and affection and little spiritual licks. So, these examples of devotion are what we are called and invited to aspire to. So how can we do that? It seems impossible. But that's why we do it imperfectly. That's why we as humans are going to go forward confidently, even knowing we're not going to do it completely. But Jesus calls and says, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. I think it starts with prayer, with praying for ourselves, praying for each other. I pray for myself, for my conversion, continually, my heart and mind to the will of Jesus. 
so that my devotion can be even more than it was the day before. If you have a crucifix in your home, stare, meditate, pray in front of your crucifix. Read the gospel for next week. Read the words of Jesus slowly to yourself. Let them come live within you. If you have family meals together, sit and talk about how has God worked in your life? What different ways has he showed up and surprised you? And, of course, doing what you're doing right now is a perfect way to increase your love and devotion for Jesus by receiving the Eucharist. We're about to receive his body and blood. Devotion and love made flesh coming into our bodies, into our spirits, so that it can um, illuminate us and help us to live with greater devotion to Jesus and each other. So I'm not going to apologize for Jesus' words. I'm not trying to cover them up. I'm just explaining them a little bit. If anyone comes to me without esteeming less his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even esteeming less his own life, he cannot be my disciple. If anyone does not renounce all his possessions, renounce all his possessions and cling to me, who is life and who is love, then he cannot be my disciple. Because why would we want to be? if we're not completely, 100% in all the way, we're going to be serving two masters. So I'm challenged by this gospel, but I'm also inspired by it. This is good news. This is the words of Jesus that continues to give us strength. May we pray for each other and pray for our own conversions to Jesus' heart as we go into this 23rd week in ordinary time. Amen.